Welcome to another tutorial for the ICS3U class at HDCH. Again, this is chapter 7. We are looking at methods. Up until now, we use methods to do a certain task. Today, we're going to look at methods that can actually return something back to the main method. Our first example of methods, we just did a task. For example, we had the titles show up, or we had a very specific task, and it could do a calculation and display it. Our second example of methods, we actually passed down or sent an argument to the method. The method accepted a parameter and it could do a calculation with that and display something. In today's example, we're going to look at how a method can actually return something. And if we look here, we're going to see return wages. And I'll explain that line in a little bit, little minute. But if we have a look at this opening line, public static double weekly wages, and we have two parameters being accepted, one called double hours and one called double rate. Main difference with this line is we're used to seeing it say public static void. Void in the past has meant that it's not going to return anything back to the main method. It simply has a task, it carries out that task, and it goes back to the main method, but it never sends, sends anything back we're going to have a little program that's going to calculate our wages, our weekly wages. At the top, I've got an import java.util.scanner. I've set up my scanner here in my main method. Scanner input equals new scanner system.in. I've got uh, two variables, one called hours worked, one called hourly pay. Those are both doubles. And they're doubles so that the user can enter. They maybe they worked 40 and a half hours, or their hourly pay is 9.25. So here we're going to prompt the user for their hours worked. So system.out.print, enter your hours worked. Uh, I'm going to put that value into the variable. We have an input.next double. And then we're going to prompt their user for the rate of pay per hour. So system.out.print, enter your hourly rate of pay. And notice I'm using a print and not a print line. The main reason for that is so that the input can stay on the exact same line as the prompt. I'm closing my scanner. That's usually a line that I forget. But I have closed my scanner this time. I am calling weekly wages method, and we've done that in the past. And the only difference this time is I'm setting up a, a variable here, double pay, and pay is going to equal the method. And it's going to pass down our hours worked, which we prompted the user for, and our hourly pay, which we also prompted the user for. The main thing here that's different, as I said earlier, is we are going to assign what the method does and what it returns back to this pay variable. And the system.out.print line, your weekly pay is, I'm going to display our wages. So let's have a look at this line a little bit more. So pay equals weekly wages, hours worked, hourly pay. So we're going to pass down these two arguments to the method called weekly wages. So let's go down here. So let's say we entered a 40 for our hours worked. And let's say that we entered a 10 for our hourly pay. So we get $10 an hour and we've worked 40 hours that week. We've got public static double weekly wages. I've set it up as a double because I'm going to be returning a double or it could have decimals in it. Weekly wages, we have double hours and we have double rate. These two parameters must match the arguments passed down to it. So they have to be double. Uh, so double hours will accept the hours worked, double rate will accept the hourly pay. So here's my post, my precondition rather. My precondition is I, the hours and the rate both have to be greater than zero. I can't work negative hours and I can't make less than, a, than zero dollars per hour. My post condition is that my wages will be returned. I'm setting up a new variable called double wages. And wages is going to equal hours, which is one of the parameters being accepted, times rate, which is the other parameter accepted. The different thing here is, instead of just displaying it in our method, we're actually going to return it back to our, our main method. So we're going to calculate our wages, but here I'm going to say return wages. And return wages will take me way back up here into my main method, and it's going to assign that value to pay. 
So that's the main difference here in this type of method is that we're going to do a calculation. And remember, a method can only return one thing. It could be a double, an int, a string, a character, a Boolean value. But it can only calculate or return one thing. So we're going to return wages. So if my hours were 40 and my rate was 10, it's going to return 400 back up to this main method where I called the weekly wages and assign it to this variable called pay. Let's run our program. Let's try it out. So enter my weekly hours, or sorry, enter my hours work for the week. Uh, I'm going to enter 40. My hourly rate of pay is 10, and there my weekly wage is $400. Now note that I just threw in the dollar sign here. I didn't do a number format or anything like that for this one. Um, to do a proper program, I would do my number format. But I just wanted to show us how the main method worked and how we could return a value. So again, this whole little example is just showing us how that a method can return a value. Remember, it can only return a single value back to our main method. So in this line here, pay equals weekly wages, whatever weekly wages calculates or returns. So whatever my method called weekly wages returns, it gets assigned to the variable called pay. This has been our example for the return statement on in methods for chapter 7 in the ICS3U class at Hamilton District Christian High School.